Okay, given the fact that you're here um, and coming to the channel, thank you very much. You're likely coming here, I'm going to have a hazard to guess, as you're about to start is a flight green. And you've read the instructions or you've spoke to your GP or your doctor or IBS nurse and they've explained the side effects and they are fucking terrifying. And uh, you're likely doing exactly what I did at the same time, which was go online, research and try to find people going through the very similar thing to what you've unfortunately going through. And I'm along with Sage, I did the exact same thing. I, I went online, I, I searched on YouTube and tried to find other people in a very similar condition, a very similar mind state to myself. And there was a few people out there who went through, the, you know, the is a thiopine journey and going through like myself I've got colitis I've got ulcerative colitis and this is my third flare up so yeah and I've never done is a thiopine before and when I kind of read the side effects it's basically death dying you're going to die this is horrible you take this you're just going to suffer in fucking pain and it's horrifying you know you look at the kind of side effects from everything from nausea, hair loss, to lack of appetite, which is good for me because I'm a fat bastard, so you know, having a lack of appetite might actually help me a little bit. Um, that's all fair and good, but then you look at the other ones, which is basically you get the fucking skin sensitivity of an albino vampire. Um, you have the risk of lymphoma, skin cancers, cancers, um, uh, leukemia, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, I think I mentioned. Um, it just sounds fucking horrible. There's no way you can look at that and go, yeah, what's the alternative? And I was in the same place, and I am in the same place. I literally, I, um, I've been through it. So I, I spoke to my IBS, IBS nurse about it, and they were okay, but, you know... I don't know if it's legally contractual or just the way they've got to do things. They've got to kind of say, "Hey, look, these are risks, and they are risks." And you quite, and they always say, "You quite weigh up the benefits." You know, then you're looking at the fact you're taking these horrible tablets, which look like this. Um, you know, up to the next four years, four or five years plus. You know, it's. That does not sound good when you look at those sort of risk factors. And that's what led me to kind of contact the sort of Crohn's and Colitis UK um, helpline. And I do recommend getting in contact with them. They were actually really good, really responsive, and really kind of listened to the problems. And, you know, the, the last year I spoke to on the phone, um, I said, hey, look, I'm about to start azathioprine, and I've got these concerns. Whereas she's like, yeah, a lot of the calls we get are from people in the very same state. You know, this is not an uncommon thing to have these worries. And people like you and me should definitely have these worries. These are the reasons why we, as a community, as a, a, a group, put up with this. You know, we get together, we do these searches, we find the medium that works for us, whether that is, you know, researching online, yeah, again, you keep doing that, you're just going to see death, death, death. Um, but for YouTube, I wanted to see somebody going through the journey. You know, go through that moral sort of dilemma that you're going through, that I'm going through, that I've had. Um, and I did, and I am. You know, there's no lie that taking this medication is terrifying. You, coming to the decision... Um, you know, sort of dealing with your own sort of mortality uh, is where I was when I was making these. I overcomplicate things, I overthink things constantly. So it wasn't a case of just, you know, I'm going to take these pills, I'm going to get better, everything's going to be fine. It's like I had to justify in my head that huge risk factor with the leukemia, lymphoma, and cancer, bone marrow, just fucking becoming a vampire. I'm Scottish, so I'm not used to seeing sun anyway, but even more, it just is horrible. Um, so yeah, I'm right there with you and I'm about to start this journey. This is actually, um, during this chat, this will be my first day taking azathioprine. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how I came to this decision of actually doing this. So for me, uh, this I mentioned quickly at the beginning that this is my third flare-up. So my very first flare-up was a couple of years back. I've had this for about four years now. Um, a couple of years back, um, got it, I got you know, I had it was shit a shit a bit of blood and 
I panicked a lot. I didn't want to go to the doctors. You know, I was, I was a bit apprehensive. I didn't want to get to go see Doctor Fingerbottom. Um, yeah, and it didn't get any better. So I made a conscious decision to actually go get get my arse fingered by a professional. Um, and <laughs> you know, once you, I'm sure you've been there myself. It's like once you get it done, you realise it's not a big fucking thing. It's overdone with so quickly. Anyway. We couldn't find any hemorrhoids, fissures, or anything like that. They diagnosed it, they sent a specialist. They diagnosed it as uh, segmental colitis. I've had a colonoscopy. And they're like, okay, yeah, we found that it was segmental colitis. It's a small area in the sigmoid of the colon. And they're like, it's just literally just here. Try prednisolone steroids. Try prednisolone steroids. It worked to treat fantastic. That was all done and dusted. I went to remission for a while. Second flare up. I thought, great, and you know, I know what this is, There's, I'm shitting blood again, I'm just going to go to the hospital, tell them what it is, and they're like, right, we know, what, we know what we're doing here. They started me immediately on prednisolone steroids. Now, prednisolone for me was, I might do a little individual channel on all the, how the drugs and how it behaved with me, but prednisolone, I only got really got two side effects. I got amazing skin and insomnia and a weight gain bum. I was big anyway, so it's not the, 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 the worst thing, you know. Um, but I've got amazing skin. When I'm on steroids, I usually do have amazing skin. It was fantastic. Um, but the prednisolone steroids did nothing. Um, then they put me onto a budesonide foam enema. Uh, that's a bundle of joy. Um, that did nothing. Uh, they then fast tracked me um, over azathioprine and straight to infliximab biological treatment infusions. And they were great. I loved them. Um, again, you had to deal with a very similar risk because you have some seriously bad side effects, but I loved the infusions. The infliximab infusions, you know, you turn up once every couple of weeks, then it got larger the distance between them. And, you know, you got infused, you were sat there for an hour, comfortable as you could like got the poison, the um, biological treatment pumped into you, you left, I felt fine afterwards. Um, and I did that for, I think it was eight treatments. Um, the only problem I stopped that was, I went into remission when Fliximab, it was perfect. You know, after, I think it was the sixth treatment, I stopped shedding blood and it was gone, it was great. I did a couple more treatments afterwards. Um, but, yeah, it was great. And the problem it was with infliximab was I started developing antibodies to it. And I'll do a thing on infliximab as, as well as the other pills. But yeah, I developed antibodies so I could no longer take infliximab. But I was in remission, so no big deal. That brings us to now. Uh, November last year, which is uh, t November 2020, I started shitting blood again. You know, there's nothing good when you start shitting blood. You come out of that remission, it starts having that flare up. You shit the blood and you're just like, oh my. You know, you, you feel it, you know you're, you're back. You know it's is starting again. Uh, your heart sinks, you just wanted a bit more peace. You quickly get over it, you quickly start getting into it, right, let's get into mode. So I was still taking Optasa, which is uh, anti-inflammatory for your gut. Um, we doubled the dose of that, so I was taking 2.5 grams twice a day, so six of the red tablets. Um, they then have to give you omeprazole, which is for your protect your stomach, calcium tablets, but this uh, not it was not it's not bedesonide. It's a I think it could be bedesonide. It's a salifac M enema, which is so much fun. And then the payment of steroids. So I'm just finished. I'm just coming off uh, prednisolone. So I'm on fifteen milligrams at the moment. You start at forty, and every five days take off five milligrams. And now none of this was working, you know. I went through all of them. They're tacking it from top and bottom, from the mesalazine, the Octasa, red pills to the fucking enema up the arse, trying to get, trying to just calm this thing fucking down. But no, nothing's working. So yeah, we got to the next stage. I personally wanted to go for like kind of move towards like vitalizumab which is because I can't take an infliximab with infusions you go to vitalizumab or one of the other ones but going for NHS you know they're like you know you kind of really need to go through azathioprine now 
um, and it could work, it could be the one for it. And then they told me the side effects. And well, they suck. Anyway, that led me to contacting Crohn's and Colitis UK, spoke to the helpline, explained the thing. And a lot of what goes through and what they said was very similar. And you know, everybody walking the street has about two in a hundred thousand chance of getting some of these horrible things. Everybody, you know, that's it. Going on azathioprine, it does raise it. You know, we, we can't lie about the fact that it's a fucking risk. It's there. Lots of pills have risk, etc., etc. That didn't make me feel any better either. Trust me. What we do get to is the fact of the precautions that medically they take. Yeah, you're not going to be looking for a summer holiday anytime soon where you can get out and enjoy the sun. Welcome to vampire lifestyle. What I would say is, you know, and I'm sure you've been told this, is you're going to be monitored. Your blood is literally monitored a lot. So you get your blood checks two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks. You get a lot of blood taken. <laughs> And that is to do all the checks, which is, you know, is your liver function test, your LFT going down, is your bone marrow, FBC, full blood counts, all this sort of stuff. Is there any change or impact? And it is to sort of say, okay, things are, di things are a bit weird here. Let's c stop this just now to figure out what the fuck is going on, where the risks are, where the changes need to be, and then change up the game plan based on that information. So you know, catch it as early as possible so that, you know, we never get to those really bad stages. And that's where I think I felt a bit, a bit more comfortable. I always thought like, you know, if I take one of these, does it suddenly switch to the leukemia switch on? And that was, you're fucked. Do not pass go, do not collect 200 pounds, be dead in five years. Fuck me, that's terrifying. No, you know, there's, it's not gonna be that way. You know, there's, it goes down this ramp where you can kind of hope to, with all these checks in place, with all the things you're like, they get identified quickly. You've got to be a bit diligent in yourself, in which you kind of monitor all the signs for sore throat, colds, infections, anything. Just keeping that constant communication. Make sure that, you know, you're, you're in, in contact. You're not going to bother them. This is your health care. This is your thing. So if you sneeze and it feels funny, you just fucking contact them. Just, there's no heroes in this. We're just going to try to save our own ass. Mm, pun intended. Right. So where we are now. Um, yeah, it's, I'm about to start day one. I'll be updating these videos m more frequently with possibly less time taking on it. Just so as we can go through. You have to take... Um, I've sh I'll show you my other pills. Um, the other ones you, I can take without food, but for azathioprine, you take with food. So I have my little pasta noodles here that I'm going to have in the morning. I'm not a big fan of eating in the morning. Uh, and they recommend swallowing it with water. Again, I would have preferred iron brew or something lovely, but here we go. So, you know, they have a lovely packaging. I love the black and red packaging, but the pill is kind of normal colored. Doesn't smell of anything. Oh yeah, also make sure you take your vitamin pills because of the bone marrow thing. So I'm on that twice a day now. Is a thyroprene. The killer cure, huh? God, these are terrifying. Here's to us. Oh, then go down. Day one begins. Now, they did warn about some nausea and things like that that I'm going to get, so I've made sure I've got a long weekend to just kind of sit back, understand what this pill is going to do to my body, and take it from there. But I'm going to love you and leave you, and I'm going to go have these lovely pasta noodles, and I will update another time. But I do recommend, if you get a chance, have a look at the Crohn's and Colitis um, website for uh, azathioprine and mercaptopurine. Never going to say that again. Uh, they've got some great information, but you know, we're in this together. It's shit. It's bloody shit. Um, but yeah, hopefully, as we go through it, you can see what it's like for me and make a decision based on that.